CSS arrow divs are a great way to identify and highlight information. They're often used as tooltips and quick instructions and make sites more interactive and user-friendly. They're also very easy to create. The issue comes from understanding how the arrow part of the div is made. Once you understand how the arrow is created, you'll be making these useful little boxes in no time. To understand how CSS arrow divs are created, let's look at a div. Here we have a square box with a border around it. The width is 100 pixels and the height is 100. As I decrease the width and height of the div, the border becomes thicker and thicker. And if I make the width and the height zero, you have just the border. Let's bring the div back and this time go through it step by step to understand how the borders create the arrows. Here's the left border, the bottom border, the right border, and the top border. These four come together to make the entire border around the div. You'll notice, though, from the colors, that the borders meet each other at angles, a bit like a triangle, and that's where the magic of the arrow or the pointer comes in. If I decrease the width of the div, you'll see these slanted points easier looking more and more like triangles. As I make the div smaller, you can see the triangles appearing. And when I take away the div completely, or make the width and height zero, you have the four triangles. To make it easier, let's take a look at them in separate points. The top border will form the bottom pointing arrow. The left border will form the right pointing arrow. The bottom border will form the upward pointing arrow and the right border will form the left facing arrow. Here we have a simple web page where we're going to put our arrow divs and see how they work. Let's come over to our editor and see what we need to do. Here is that red box with the championship information and the CSS styling for it. What we need is an arrow div pointing to the red box and highlighting some important information in it. Let's go ahead and create our arrow div. First, let's create the box without the pointer. I'm going to create a new class and call it .arrowbox. The styling is fairly simple if you're familiar with CSS. So I've created a new class called dot arrow box, and I'm going to give it a width of 200 pixels, a height of 30 pixels, and a background color of yellow. I like the border radius to be slightly curved, That'll be five pixels, and I'm going to give it a fixed position, because later on when I add my JavaScript, I want it to come up in a particular place. I wanted three M's from the top. You can use pixels or percentages. And left 230 pixels. Let's give it a padding of 10 pixels. And give it a slightly nicer typeface like Roboto. And fallback on sans serif. Let's make the font size 14 pixels and the line height 22 pixels. Let's make the color dark gray and let's align the text to the center. Okay, now that we have our div class, let's go ahead and add it over here. At the bottom, div class arrow box and let's say type of match. I'm gonna go ahead and save this and come on over to my browser. And when I click refresh, there's the box. Awesome, it's looking good so far. But where's my arrow? My arrow is going to come by following the same process and adding what's called a pseudo class. 
So let's come on over back to the editor and add the pseudo class. What we're doing here is going to add the borders as we saw earlier in this video. So I'm going to create my pseudo class and have it dot arrow box colon after. Make sure there's no space between the colon and after, otherwise it won't work. We have to give it content and keep it blank. If we don't have any content in there, the box won't show at all. From the earlier part of this tutorial, we give it the width of zero pixels and the height zero pixels as well. Great. Now let's add the four borders. Great. Finally, it's really important that we set the position of the arrow to absolute. Let's go ahead and add the border properties. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type 10 pixels solid transparent and I'm going to add the same for all the borders. Let's save this and look at our HTML. Okay, the border hasn't come up. Actually, it is there. It's just that it's completely transparent. Now we can decide where we want the border to point. Because we want the arrow to point to the right, I'm going to change the left border. And I'm going to give it the same color as the box. But there's no positioning, so nothing's going to happen. What we need to do now is to move the arrow all the way to the edge of the yellow box. Let's do that by setting the left margins at 100% and the top to 50%. If I save this now and preview, you'll see that the arrow is in fact pointing in the right direction, but it's not lining up in the middle. What happened? Very simple. The top is at 50%, but there's an additional 10 pixels at the top and 10 pixels at the bottom, which is pushing the arrow down. Fixing this is really easy. Just type margin top and take away those pixels. Save it and preview again. And great, there's our arrow. As you can see, it's really easy once you get the hang of which way the arrow points and that the arrows are created by the borders of the div when the div's width and height is zero. So go ahead and experiment. You can change the different properties. Maybe you want it to point down, so we can add the border color to the top. And we have to change the left now to 50% because it needs to come in the middle. And we change the top to 100. And because we'll be too far to the right, Let's make the margin left, save it and preview our work. Great! Have fun with this. I've posted the code in the description below and if you have any questions, please ask. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and see you next time.